Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. Welcome to this fireside chat where we will discuss market trends and innovations in the contact logistics industry. And we will do that with DB Schenker, the winner of our Customer of Excellence Award. My name is Kaz Branches. I'm responsible for the go to market initiatives for Inforce, Supply Chain Suite, and Asia Pacific. We are extremely honored to have with us Xavier Garrico. He is a board member for Contact Logistics with DB Schenker. Welcome, Xavier. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you again, Kaz. Good to, good to see you. So with a very international career, including some, some well-known global brand names, I, I guess you must love uh, global and complex supply chain challenges. But, but first, could you tell us about DB Schenker and how do you differentiate yourself in a very dynamic and competitive market space? Certainly. So maybe a little bit of uh, background figures as to who we are, and then I will describe a little bit what we stand for. Uh, Schenker is one of the le leading logistic providers in the world, uh, about 17 billion euros in revenue uh, across the typical business units of contra logistic, air and ocean, as well as land freight forwarding. Uh, our purpose is to advance the business and the lives by shaping the way our world connects. And, I perp and, and, and we want to achieve that. Our ambition is to become the provider of choice, being able to attract the talent, uh, being a leader in the sustainability agenda, and ultimately uh, shape the global market, particularly in the logistic arena, through digital value creation, as well as a relentless effort in our productivities. Okay. So... Um... You can ask many questions on that, on the numbers and the figures that are there. Uh, we might come to that. So, but looking at the growth you've seen over the over the years, you, you've always been in touch with the market very well. So, so which trends and maybe what challenges do you see right now? No, very good question, and and we certainly experience a lot of different uh, thrust and and trends in the marketplace that we're trying to understand and try to bring it into our product offering. Uh, maybe I will highlight three. Uh, the first one is the change in the consumer habits from a purchasing standpoint. So traditionally, you may have seen the power of a brand and the loyalty and the promise that it comes with. Uh, you have the uh, performance of the product intrinsically that uh, guarantees whether this product will be uh, repeating its sales. But now more and more we see this need for customization in how this product or how the service is delivered to the end consumer. And that's shaping the way we do business. Uh, it's shaping the way our customers are reacting to the market opportunities. So that will be a big trend, certainly with the introduction of e-commerce, but more generally speaking, omni-channel. The second one may be the introduction more and more of the digital revolution, right? Whether this is in the integrated uh, systems that we can enable our business models with from a productivity, from a capability, uh, integrating those seamlessly with, with our customers. But it also offers now some benefit in terms of even artificial intelligence, where we can look at big data, start to do some diagnostics, if not predicting, you know, what are the trends that we need to respond to in terms of demand or in terms of the portfolio complexity changes. The third one may be, and we will be speaking to that a little bit later, is the emergence of uh, accessible robotization and automation technologies that we can very easily now implement into our warehouse space, which offers uh, undoubtedly, you know, not only opportunities in the cost productivity, but more importantly to address some of the issues around access to town and access to, to labor in all the geographies that we play in. No, okay. Well, yeah, we're definitely going to touch more on the on the automation. Um, so, uh, have you developed some? Uh, I remember the days from logistics sales rather years ago, where it was it was almost like pallet in, pallet out. Uh, that has changed. And have you changed your your offerings and uh, a bit? And and can you share some of the unique offerings and the fulfillment strategies that you have developed in your portfolio for your customers? Absolutely. So. If you think about an end-to-end -end supply chain, we participate 
across the whole chain. So at the very onset, we will be offering a production vendor management inventory solutions where we are not only now the center of gravity for the inventory management feeding the manufacturing lines, we now help our customers, you know, to do the MRP, the material replenishment planning. Uh, we participate uh, in the supply reliability by activating the exception management, you know, ensuring that any shortfalls are expedited in the right and appropriate uh, cost manner. Um, we also look at the inventory invested by our customers and we help them to optimize the cash uh, that is uh, uh, locked within the supply chain. And, and finally, we, we hope to collaborate with uh, the multi-tier suppliers and, and maybe optimize the wrong strategies so that we can make this a more seamless supply chain. Wow. If you continue maybe into the next node, um, this is the more traditional fulfillment. Right. And as I described before, as we change the way we reach out to the consumers, maybe those uh, fulfillment become more omnichannel, right? And, and we go yeah. now not only beyond the order management, but we consider the postponement, the integration of our distribution and offer real time visibility of the goods in response to that order. Wow. And then finally, as you consider the very end cycle of this whole chain, we participate in the reverse logistic, the return, the maybe aftermarket repairs, yeah. the refurbishment maybe of some of the products so that we can uh, bring the value of, 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 uh, to our customers in, in using some of those assets and, and being able to sell them again uh, with the right value proposition. Wow, that's a that's a big uh, big offering, and and in the past it, it, it's much more than outsourcing a warehouse operation. This is almost like running the full supply chain for some some good customers. Int very interesting. Uh. So, um, I, I've been in warehousing a bit as well. A bit, let's say, 10, 15 years ago, the warehouses of the the logistic service providers were, were not as automated as they are now, and you touched on that warehouse automation. So, so what has changed? Is it the move to e-commerce? Uh, is it the, the, the more complex and high speed demand for the customer? So, so what has been driving this focus on automation and, and warehouse automation? I think it's the convergence of, of many different events. Um, I described before that maybe we are witnessing true innovation in the technology that is available. The uh, cost for those technologies are certainly more affordable. The versatility of the technology is far more flexible than before. And so we can see the right returns. So in the duration of our typical contracts, and hopefully in the extended duration of our relationship with our clients, we are able to implement those technologies and, and, and bring the value and get in the, the right return and be flexible in the changes that we experience with our clients in their demand, in their portfolio, and how we have dealt that accordingly. Something that maybe just five years ago or 10 years ago were definitely not available. Uh, the second maybe is that we are successfully integrating those hardware solutions with our systems. And we do that in a seamless way, in a cost and timely way. Um, so, of course, you will see the a backbone of the typical WMS solutions. Um, and, and, and then on top of that, we, we bring now, you know, the ability to optimize the labor uh, with the technology, optimize the, uh, the, the positioning of the inventory in real time. Uh, and in some other case, cases, we are able to optimize the sequencing of our processes with flow shop control system solutions. So I think it's the convergence of that, uh, you know, this cloud-based mm -hmm. and, and very accessible, versatile technologies that is uh, giving us the chance uh, to, to offer those extended solutions to our customers. Okay, um, now I can go two ways. Because um, coming back to one of when, when the material you showed earlier on where the revenue comes from, I think ten years ago it was very heavily focused on um, on on Europe and a bit the US and not so much in Asia. And now it has gone really through global, nicely divided between the the Americas, uh, Europe, and and Asia. Do you see differences in? 
warehouse operations, tactics, fulfillment strategies between the US warehouse operations or contract logistics operations, the European contract logistics operations, and the Asia, because I think we have an audience from uh, which is a global audience uh, today. Now, uh, uh, an interesting question for us, certainly, you know, we are a business started in Europe, uh, more specifically in Germany. And, and with that, you know, particularly verticals like the automobile and maybe the, the retail uh, businesses. Uh, as we continue to grow, we saw the opportunities to expand, certainly in the most uh, uh, exciting market of Asia, but as well, you know, taking advantage of the more developed markets of Americas. Um, and as we did so, we were able to expand in all the verticals, right? So we, we went into electronics, we went into industrial, we went into healthcare uh, more recently, and now this omni-channel e-commerce solutions. Um, we certainly witnessed uh, a lot of similarities, and, and that gave us the opportunity to standardize our products to a great degree. And it's important because we can prove to the customer the reliability and the versatility of our solutions and implement those successfully. Um, at the same time, we still see the 20% customization, right? Whether it's a client driven or market driven, right? And, and so that may speak to the macroeconomic differences, that may speak, you know, to the client business model differences, um, and ultimately, you know, the way we may run the relationship. Um, if you think about Asia, you may experience a little bit more of a ecosystem relationship, right? Participation with many different players in an open way. Um, very different maybe than the westernized traditional way of, of, of running a, a supply chain. Yeah, 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 you need to work with Uncle Ho in, in Vietnam to get the goods delivered. Absolutely, yeah. Experiencing that. Um, interesting. Yeah, Asia is a very interesting market uh, and where you have grown significantly and, and invested significantly. Yeah, and but recently, um, I mean, we spoke about warehouse automation. You had a very significant uh, go live with uh, the Red Lion project, a very impressive regional hub for automated high-speed logistics, very strategically located next to the Changi Airport in Singapore. So what, what could you tell us about uh, that, that project? I think that, that's a really showcase of automation, I think. It is indeed, and, and I think its uh, birth came from the congruence of why we were interested about developing a regional distribution center in Singapore, right? As you know, Singapore is one of the most uh, well-connected airport as well as seaport uh, in the Asia-Pacific uh, uh, region. Uh, we also benefit from broad bilateral, multilateral uh, trade agreements. Um, and we were uh, then in a position to take advantage of uh, free trade zone land uh, integrated with the airport where we could now build an operation of 550,000 square foot uh, feed, sorry, uh, site, which was constrained somewhat in space, but we were enable, you know, the, 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 the capacity and the capability by bringing technology. Um, so a lot of this automation and system integration that I described before has been uh, put to approval principle, if you wish, into that facility and very successfully so. So it's a multi-client uh, site uh, that is bringing to life a lot of this thinking and demonstrated that we are able to, to generate the value to all our clients. One point maybe that I will highlight um, is the importance of selecting the right players, right? So whether in the technology, we are certainly partnering with uh, global uh, suppliers, uh, trying to understand their offering and, and bringing those in a customized way to the product offering. Um, but as well on the supply uh, of the uh, systems, right? And, and this was uh, how we uh, capitalized on the long tenure relationship with Info. Yeah. And I think the uh, more recent uh, next generation WMS capability that, uh, that you have developed and bringing that mm -hmm. also in this uh, hub in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah next gen WMS. I, uh, I remember when there was zero uh, projects live with, uh, with NextGen in the very early stages, and now that has been rolled out to a large number of, I think, close to 100 sites, over 300 projects or so. It's, it's really a significant rollout of the last couple of years. 
Um, very, very impressive uh, there. And that relationship has been on Info WMS, uh, Warehouse Management Solutions, but also Nexus for the intercontinental supply chain. And you mentioned the, the, the build the ship, the MRP operations for, for some of your, your customers. So I think that, that the relationship went 25 years back and it, it's still, still going and, and ongoing. Um, concluding, I think, uh, um, I said two, two more questions, I think, uh, or one. Looking at the current market conditions, so, so what challenges and opportunities do you see with the current climate? We, we have seen companies or logistics service providers setting up direct-to-consumer strategies, pop-up warehouses. So what challenges and opportunities do you see and do you believe those changes are, are permanent? I maybe will describe what we have maybe witnessed in the last 10 years and, and maybe with the COVID, right? Uh, a perfect example of a black swan event, you know, a total disruption in the way, you know, the industry is responding to exceptional circumstances. Uh, first, there's trends, right? So uh, there used to be a time where I think a lot of the companies uh, saw the benefit of sales and operations planning, right? Uh, optimizing the quality of its forecast maybe rationalizing its portfolio, trying to, to definitely drive some uh, efficiencies in the go-to-market execution in, uh, in those two areas. Today, either because of the e-commerce, right, this unique consumer customization, uh, this multi-channel dynamics that are real-time, there is everything but a predictable forecast. And I think the first then challenge for us is how do we respond to this demand volatility, this uncertain event that may be immediately open us, right? So what are the capacity bandwidth, the type of flexibility, and we do so, you know, we're with this, the same ambition of meeting the customer uh, service level agreements. So that, that, I think, is an underlining and still very true objective and a motivation in how we drive yeah. the product solution development. Um, the black swan maybe is enhancing you know, this, this yeah. challenge, where it now uh, forces us to be very clear about not only the resilience of a supply chain, the quality of that execution, but now I've been able to shift you know, the way we move the goods for our customers as they think different sourcing, because not only the uh, governmental, you know, restrictions, the trade maybe shift that we experience between some countries or regions. Um, and those shifts are now within scales of weeks, if not months, uh, not years, mm -hmm. as we may have experienced, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's certainly one, one of the, uh, the, you know, dilemmas maybe, or mm -hmm. certainly thrust that sure. we need to respond um, in a most effective way. Second one is uh, reliable, executable business continuity planning, right? And certainly as we yeah. respond all to the COVID, uh, we have the safety and the health of our employees and mine. Uh, how do we yeah. then maintain an operational life, right? How do we do that and, and achieving that uh, safety standard that we all uh, want to, to be ambitious yeah. for. Um, and that is definitely forcing us not only on the process changes, but also structurally, you know, so that we can keep those yeah. safe distances, right? So yeah, yeah. it's an uh, incredible speed of transformation, incredible speed of response, you know, to unfo unforeseeable events um, yeah, yeah. that we've been able to, to adapt as quickly as we reasonably could and maintaining, you know, that supply uh, for our clients. Yeah, because I can imagine you're, you're part of essential supply chains as well and, and still supporting big operations. If if things are not there, um, it, it doesn't move or factories are shut down or if demand is not fulfilled. And there's probably healthcare, healthcare operations as well uh, supporting that. So very uh, part of essential supply chains. Very good. Um, maybe to conclude, so what recommendations would you give to companies that are manufacturers, retailers, brands that are struggling managing with these disruptions in their supply chain? And so how yeah, you mentioned that, how do you build a bit more resilient supply chain or any any advice you could give to to the audience uh, here today <laughs> i think we're all learning you know yeah. in, the, in the last six months we're all reflecting in terms of what would be the industry post the covid 
And, yeah. and once this will settle, will we ever come back to the uh, more familiar framework that we uh, witnessed beforehand? And I think everybody, you know, majority of the people will tell, uh, we, we are certainly not going to move to the past, right? We yeah. need to operate in ver with very different elements of, of consideration. Um, I, I believe that um, this complexity needs to be embraced. Uh, this change needs to be a new framework and, and under which we need to operate. Um, and so the question is, how do we bring the right solutions? How do we bring the right information flows? How do we understand the right yeah. challenges uh, of our clients and be more consulting uh, in, in that aspect so that we can create you know, the solutions and implement those uh, with uh, speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's uh, calling for more collaboration yeah. Um, breaking a little bit, you know, those uh, uh, China's wall, Chinese walls, yeah. you know, that we may have uh, seen in the past more from an IP uh, protection, uh, recognizing that uh, there is more gain to be added by, by opening up okay. in, in the way we think about the problems. And working together, yeah, excellent. Wow. Hey, um, we are running out of time, but this was a fantastic conversation. Thank you again for taking the time to participate at Inform 2020. I think there were some fabulous insights in your business and I believe great guidance and advice uh, for the audience. I, I really look forward to continuing working together between Info and uh, DB Schenker. And again, really thank you for your insight. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.